Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. I'm going to show you all my favorite graphics. I keep these on my desktop, on my laptop. So here we go. This is a graphic that I made. And you can see on the far right, we got optimum health. And you look over, that's the native state of the body. So a mild state of ketosis is the native state of the body. If you consider that most of the population of the earth grew up over millennia with four seasons. So there was half the year with... Uh, no plants, and the other half of the year had plants. So in general, people would be in ketosis and out of ketosis. And so ketosis is part of the native state of the body. Okay, so we have cell health, increase oxygen in the blood, decrease waste in the blood. And then you go below towards the orange and the red, we got lactic acidosis, and that's cell starvation, disease, cell death, and then body death. So this is a graphic that I made. This is um, something that I pulled off uh, from uh, online, pathophysiological classification of lactic acidosis. So let me kind of walk you through this. We have hypoxic um, lactic acidosis and non-hypoxic. So this is the mechanism of chronic disease. And if you see the hypoxic on the left column, we have several examples. Ischemia, which is a loss of blood flow. Um, severe anemia, which is a decrease in oxygen. Cardiac arrest, obviously, loss of blood flow. Uh, global hypoxia, you know, head to toe. Carbon monoxide poisoning, respiratory failure. Asthma, COPD, asphyxia. So um, regional, regional hypoperfusion. So you can have a part of your body that doesn't have enough blood. So, and then limb or, or mesenteric, which is like uh, torso ischemia, loss of blood flow. So this is the mechanism of chronic disease. So you have a loss of blood flow or too much waste in the blood causing the arteries to dilate, which slows down circulation, which makes the capillaries engorged with toxic and hypoxic blood. The cells can't get oxygen. They also cannot get rid of their waste. So the cells start to become toxic and hypoxic and they starve, then they die. So when, when muscle cells die, they tighten up. So people get anxiety, chest pain, fibromyalgia, leg cramping, muscle, you know, muscle symptoms. If it's brain cells that are dying, they get all kinds of mental disorders. This is um, the mechanism of chronic disease. We're looking at it right now. Here's the different causes. So on the non-hypoxic side, go all the way down to the bottom. It says large fructose loads, eating too much sugar, and it says fructose. That's fruit. So high fructose corn syrup also that can cause non-hypoxic lactic acidosis. All right, which is rampant. Um, every doctor should be looking at lactic acidosis every day for every patient. All right, let's get back to the top of this non-hypoxic column. Delayed clearance, that means that your blood's not getting clean. Renal or hepatic dysfunction, that means the kidneys or the liver are not cleaning. Those are the two main detox organs. And then we have sepsis which is toxic blood, thiamine deficiency, B1 deficiency. Um, B1 is important for helping the liver clean the blood out. Um, alcoholic and diabetic ketoacidosis, too many, too many ketones in the blood and too much sugar. And then we have cyanide, salicylates, methanol, um, antiretroviral drug. These are all poisons. So poisonous blood, not enough oxygen. And then we have uh, accelerated aerobic glycolysis, too much burning of the sugar even in the presence of oxygen um, at a very fast pace. Okay, so there's a lot of, this is, this can be applied to almost everybody when they're not feeling good. Or it can be, it can apply to an athlete who just got done exercising. So fitness nutrition is human nutrition. All right, so here's my next favorite graphic. WD on the left stands for Western Diet Rats. So they fed these groups of rats um, these three diets and they sacrifice them and open up their skin to look at their uh, organs and the Western diet rat has white that's all fat in there and the liver is pink it's not very red it should be more red look on the far right we got the standard rat chow it's a little bit better the liver looks pretty good uh, from my viewpoint it's still not quite the best red and then you can still see some white embedded in the uh, torso in the viscera Look in the middle, KD means ketogenic diet rat. And the, the body of the rat is smaller, 
and there's no fat embedded in there. The liver looks super healthy and red, and the organs don't have any fat embedded in there. That also means the arteries are going to be clear too. So when I saw this, it kind of blew my mind. It's been a couple years since I found this for the first time, and then here I am sharing it with you again. All right, this is a series of studies that show uh, cancers, different cancers and their reaction to ketosis. Anytime you see green, it shows a study that shows an anti-tumor effect, ketosis killing cancer. Red means pro-tumor effect, which is in three of them. Blue is no effect. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten greens and three that have no green. So ketosis is the best hope for cancer. Now it doesn't always work. Um, but look at this one kidney cancer. It's red and orange. There's no green with kidney cancer. But I've seen two people reverse their kidney cancer with ketosis. So there you go. This is one of my favorite graphics. Okay, next. This is from Dr. Angela uh, Poff. And these are uh, mice. This is a mouse with cancer. And you can see the cancer going away from uh, bioluminescence uh, imaging. So from left to right, the cancer is going away. The next graphic is uh, ketone levels for 400 people. This is a study done by Verta Health, Dr. Sarah Halberg, and Dr. Steve Finney. They started off at 0.6 ketones and ended off at 0.4 after 12 months. 60% reduction in diabetes. So people are losing weight. We're talking 400 people. 262 of them were diabetic. So reduction in weight, reduction in medications, reduction in blood glucose, insulin, etc., Cardiovascular markers got better. Fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. Released uh, June of 2018. Next, we have, doc we have uh, Dave Feldman. He's got his website, is cholesterolcode.com. He gave this example. Craig Moffat, 40 years old, marathon runner. Total cholesterol is 457. Now, any medical doctor would be, um, would have, would be committing malpractice if they did not Tell this guy, you have to take a statin drug. If a doctor doesn't give this guy a statin drug, they should kick him out of the practice and say, I need to preserve my license. I will get my license taken away from me if I don't give you a statin drug. Look at his LDL, 335. HDL is 109, which is really good. Triglyceride, 67, which is really, really good. So he's got two good things that are high, or, uh, two good things, high HDL, low triglycerides, and then two bad things, bad, air quotes, bad, total cholesterol and LDL. But you take the total cholesterol, subtract the LDL, subtract the HDL, and you're left with what's called remnant cholesterol, also known as VLDL. You want that to be less than 19. The lowest risk quintile, see that at the bottom, lowest risk quintile is below 19. So the lowest 20% with the healthiest uh, hearts have below 19 remnant cholesterol. So this guy is super healthy, and that's the math that Dave Feldman figured out. And it's, I mean, he's, I don't know if he's necessarily figured out, but he certainly is promoting it really well. Okay, next I want to show you, this is uh, work from uh, Dr. Longo. And you may have heard of him, um, anti-aging researcher, uh, uh, fasting mimicking diet. They studied yeast and they showed that periodic fasting shows an increase in stress resistance and an increase in lifespan. And then in the middle, had, they went to mice and they did periodic fasting mimicking diets and they showed increase in multi-system regeneration. That means their cardiovascular system regenerated, their nervous system regenerated, multiple systems in their body got better. And then they had decreased adiposity, so they lost fat. Now... You can lose weight and still be fat. It's, that's visceral fat. So you'll see this with uh, vegans. They lost their muscle tone. They have a little layer of water around their uh, body. And um, their belly's a little bit bloated. They could be normal weight. and um, But they have some like excess sort of cushioning around them because they don't have the fat and protein. Okay, decrease in cancer, decrease in inflammatory diseases, increase in immune and cognitive rejuvenation. So the immune system becomes rejuvenated. And then the brain gets rejuvenated. So kind of thinking like Alzheimer's and excessive computer use. Increase in lifespan. Every single one of these words is backed by science. This isn't some 
you know, science fiction writer going, you know, writing this down and making a nice graphic from off the top of their head. There's tons of research backing up every single word on this graphic. Now for humans, uh, periodic fasting mimicking diet in their research showed increase in regeneration markers, so blood tests get better, and then decrease in diabetes, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and aging. All right, cool. So Dr. Longo, he's cool. He's one of the good guys. All right, this is a graphic I made. It took me six months to figure this out with my graphic designer. It says, follow the physiology, address all three factors of chronic disease, causes, mechanisms, symptoms. There's three main causes of chronic disease, toxins, pathogens, excessive sugar metabolism, and then two minor ones, scars and biomechanical. Okay, there's uh, two mechanisms of chronic disease. The major one is lactic acidosis by far. The minor one is alkalosis. I've seen it a couple times. The pH of the blood is too alkaline. It's a super easy fix. It can be fixed in a couple days. The lactic acidosis part, it's a little bit more complicated. And then the last circle here is symptoms. Fr symptoms come from organ dysfunction. So you wanna feed the organs and fix the mechanism and fix the cause. But the way that you help a person with their symptoms is by feeding the organs. And I wrote a bunch of therapies, glandular therapy, whole food nutrition, herbs, stem cells slash DNA, ketosis, fasting, homeopathy. Speaking of homeopathy, here's my next graphic. I just have a few more, so bear with me. But this is from August of 2016. This is when I did not yet know that I had black mold poisoning, but I was suffering from it. And this is the summertime. So... Uh, mold loves humidity and warmth. So I remember one day I was working outside in my yard for a few hours, completely exhausted, and my heart was racing. I came inside. My pulse was crazy high. It was like 130. And I took a shower. I came out of the shower, and it was still really high. It was 120. When you're done exercising, let's say you get your pulse up to 120 or 130. Within a minute, it should be down to, you know, 85. So here, so it took a day, it took 24 hours for my pulse to get below 80. And my normal pulse is in the 60s. Okay, so on this day, Wednesday, October 10th, I started a homeopathic remedy called Mycotox. It gets rid of the mycotoxins from the mold out of your body. And you can see my, my pulse was 73. And the next day it was 64. I started taking it every day. Four days later, it was 61 then 58, then 56, then 54. So a homeopathic remedy did this. There was nothing else that had this kind of effect on me over the course of the last three years of me trying to figure out you know, my symptoms related to the black mold. So yeah, homeopathy, this is an N equals one study, me, N equals one. And um, I did one homeopathic uh, video on my YouTube channel and I still get people posting on how stupid it is and homeopathy, is BS and it's got over 400 thumbs down. It's uh, it's almost entertaining. You know, when people say, well, the government of, you know, and they name a country, this government says it doesn't work. And, you know, this um, medical institution says it doesn't work. Well, we all know how bad governments are. And we've seen in the last six months, the retractions and the, um, the false reporting by large medical institutions, okay? And I still stick to this homeopathy works statement, and it's not like a huge part of my practice. It's probably 1%. But, you know, when I use it, I get results like this. So there's that. Here's my next graphic. I got two more. This is a um, uh, wording that I will read to you. So somebody gave this, sent this to me as a private message. Okay, so here it goes. It says, Darren, the two major predictors of overall health and longevity are insulin sensitivity, which a lot of people know and talk about all the time, and plasma iron levels. According to one study, young women that had undergone hysterectomies and no longer menstruated began to achieve plasma iron levels similar to men. So their iron went up to match men because they weren't, they weren't bleeding every month. The study followed these women over a period of several decades. And the result was that these women lost their seven-year life expectancy advantage over men. So they died early like men do. Okay, next. Type 3 diabetes, or Alzheimer's, is the result of the accumulation of iron in the brain over time that causes the inflammation 
resulting in the denaturing of insulin receptors and Alzheimer's disease. So the iron is destroying the insulin receptors in the brain. Okay, next. Smoking results in the accumulation of iron in the body and the disturbance of iron homeostasis, period. Iron, after smoking cessation, does not result in a timely decrease in smoking-related disease because the iron in the lungs is stubbornly difficult to eliminate. So somebody smokes for 20 years, they accumulate a bunch of iron in their lungs, they quit smoking, and they still die early, and possibly from lung cancer, <laughs> because they still have iron in their lungs that it's hard to get out. Iron in the body is carefully controlled by ferritin and transferritin, and you can get blood tests for that. Otherwise, free iron is highly inflammatory, like glucose and toxic. The Iron Disorders Institute has some very interesting information you might enjoy. Good luck, and you are welcome for the tip. So the Iron Disorders Institute, something to look into. And get your iron check. And even for men, um, even though you know, you're know you not menstruating, obviously, but you can have too much iron in your blood because you're supposed to bleed sometimes. Men would go hunting. They would get scratched by the lion or whatever or bit by some animal. And they would go underneath a bush and bleed for a couple days and then recover. And so that's how men would get rid of their iron. So if your iron's too high, you can detoxify their supplements for that. Or you just give blood. Go to the Red Cross and give blood. Okay. This is my last one. So I got into Twitter a few months, six months ago probably. You can see at the bottom, there's my tweet. Darren Schmidt, DC. My Twitter handle is at Real Food Cures. And it says, enough already with meta-analyses. Another misleading type of science in healthcare. A meta-analysis is you take a bunch of studies, you put them together, and you get data from all the studies. So I got retweeted by Dr. Jason Fung. I feel like I've been anointed. He says, these days I consider meta-analyses a lower level of evidence than case reports. He would rather look at a case report, like a single person had a condition, and then they worked with their doctor, and they did these things, and the person got better. One N equals one. So he says, meta-analysis relies on the principle that you can put garbage in and get prime rib out. As if... All right, cool. So that was that was a good day that Fung retweeted my tweet, and I still feel like an, I'm an amateur at Twitter, but uh, that was really cool. All right, those are all my favorite graphics. I keep them on the uh, my desktop on my laptop, so I can refer to them sometimes. <laughs> if you like this information, please share and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. All right, thanks.